one of the oldest and best respected of traditional seafood restaurants in the town of Calabash is Ella's. It opened in 1950 and has been going strong ever since. It's a place where a lot of locals eat and it's the place Bob Garner stopped recently for tonight's house special. Ella's is definitely one of the rock solid old standbys of traditional Calabash. If you're there in the fall or winter, you'll want to look into their oyster roast, literally a roaster full of small but intensely flavored local oysters from the nearby Lockwood Folly River called Lockwood Folly Rocks, steamed as you like them. I like to start with a bowl of melted butter mixed with hot sauce. This is very much in keeping with the spirit of the way that my family has eaten oysters for a hundred years. Now some people can't wait long enough to do this, but what really makes you feel great is to get kind of a critical mass of oysters all in one place rather than eating them one at a time. Look at that. Mmm. One giant oyster, lots of little oysters, heaven either way. And when you look at the menu here at Ella's, you still see words like snow crab legs or grilled or stuffed or sauteed. But what you expect here in Calabash is Calabash style seafood, lightly breaded, fried to a golden brown. Since 1950, 1950 generations of Ella's customers have dined on the deluxe seafood platter. Flounder, fried shrimp, golden plump scallops, fried oysters during oyster season. These plump, beautiful shrimp are the perfect place to start. You can usually tell in about two seconds where their shrimp are really fresh. Old timers used to say they should have an ever so slight taste of iodine, and you know what? These do. Everything's instant these days. Most people nowadays don't want to deal with flounder on the bone, although that's my personal favorite, but I do dearly love flounder fillets as well, especially if they're really fresh. Mm. And especially if they aren't overcooked, just nice and soft and yielding to the teeth. Oh yeah. There is nothing predictable about the Brentwood restaurant here in Little River, whether it's the beautiful property that it's on, the low country French cuisine that it offers, or maybe even the supernatural activity that even the owners can't dispute. There's really something here for everyone, so we got to go check it out. I was like equipment starting by itself and voices and things moving. It's sometimes it's, it's, it's difficult to deny the obvious. Rumor has it the living aren't the only ones who walk the halls of the Brentwood restaurant these days. Built in 1910 by Essie and Clarence McCorsley, the Victorian-style house moved from personal estate to bed and breakfast and now a fine dining restaurant. Even a true skeptic like owner and chef Eric Mosson can't deny what he's seen and heard during his late nights here. But there's just things happening that, that we can't really explain. I think some of our, some of our uh, employees, for example, are using it. So if like something disappears, oh, the must be the ghost, you know. So <laughs> I saw a full body apparition. Up the stairs came this black thing. A local paranormal group called the Pit Crew spent the night and captured their experiences on camera. A moving dumbwaiter without anyone touching it. Images caught in the reflection of a painting and the same black blur that others have claimed to have seen over the years. Eric and his wife Kim have had their fair share of first-hand encounters with the spirits as well. Kim even downloaded an app that has a built-in EVP or electronic voice phenomenon, a common tool used by ghost hunters to record paranormal sound. Despite her skepticism, she saved the recording of something she says simply can't be a coincidence. Take it with a grain of salt, but you know, it, it, when I, I did ask it one question and I said, who is here? And it said, um, Clarence, which is the original 
owner's name who built the house. With story after story, the Mossons, their employees, and even some regulars are convinced they aren't alone within these walls. For me, the feeling is almost uh, somebody watching over us, almost like a protection, you know. While a chance at a paranormal experience is enough to draw in the crowds, the Masons say there's much more to the Brentwood than just the ghost stories. Just imagine the food known and loved in the South mixed with the French roots of Chef Eric. Happy birthday! And voila, a tantalizing treat for your taste buds. It's true that growing up in France, you're exposed to some fantastic food. Inspired to pick up his whisk by his grandmother, Eric's passion for food ripened when he attended a prestigious French culinary school. For him, the kitchen is his canvas and cooking is the way he expresses himself. We do have access to some fantastic fish and seafood, either from Murray's Inlet uh, or from Oak Island. I apply French techniques and try to put it all together. And buying and growing local is a top priority for the Brentwood owners. Eric gave us a tour of their greenhouse that holds every herb they cook and garnish with. And then the garden, where asparagus, snow peas, and carrots are already sprouting. Oh, this one's being stubborn. It didn't take long to realize my green thumb is a bit rusty. Oh, oh no. This is not good. Okay, non-existent. This would probably not make it to the market. It's safe to say I'm going to leave this to the pros. I am a horrible gardener. If you're looking for a hands-on learning experience, Chef Eric Masson offers these cooking classes every single month. If you're looking more for a hands-off approach, they also have a one club that includes a six course meal we've got all the details on our website but for now reporting in your community of little river i'm heather byans for wmbf news